everyone, and it's back again for some World Superbike action as the 2009 Championship gets underway with the opening round at Phillip Island in Australia at the start of March. Well, last year's Championship finished just four months ago in Portugal with a third title win for Aussie Troy Bayliss, who had now retired. So with the three times winner and Ducati legend and now gone, the slate was wiped clean for the 2009 championship battle. Despite the current economic downturn, World Superbike looks good for 2009. 32 permanent riders, seven manufacturer teams from Aprilia, BMW, Ducati, Honda, Kawasaki, Suzuki and Yamaha. A handful of good privateer squads, a massive influx of top British riders, Vern, Haslam and Sykes, a new Super Bowl format as well, and it would all get its baptism of fire at the spectacular Phillip Island circuit over the weekend. There's been a lot of musical chairs over the winter as well. Noriyuki Haga switching from Yamaha to Ducati. Three times AMA Superbike champion Ben Spies taking his place. Max Biaggi back on an Italian factory machine once again, but this time an Aprilia. And double champion Troy Corsa, together with Rubens Aus, spearheading BMW's new S1000RR machine to its debut as the German manufacturer lines up for his first ever World Superbike race. Honda and Suzuki were there with virtually unchanged teams, while Kawasaki had now switched their allegiance to Paul Bird's outfit in the UK for its 2009 campaign. Michel Fabrizio dominated the testing in South Africa in December, and Shane Byrne at Portimao in January, both on Ducati machines. So the question was, would we see Ducati's supremacy continuing into the 22nd running of the Superbike World Championship? So it's down to the island to find out. of two new European manufacturers in the championship is a mouth-watering one this year. And the general consensus is that Aprilia and BMW will challenge the traditional hierarchy pretty quickly. Aprilia come back after a gap of seven years. We sent our man, the technical expert and racer Steve Martin, to have a look at the new RSV4 machine. It was 38 degrees here at Phillip Island on Friday. It's a little bit cooler this morning, but uh, the, the hot news is we're here with uh, Gigi from uh, Aprilia Racing, the technical director. Can you tell us a little bit about the new RSV 1000? Uh, you, you know, we, we started the project uh, at the end of 2005 because this is not only a racing bike, but also a, a, a uh, this bike comes from a production bike and so we, we start this project uh, at the end of 2005 and uh, we use all uh, last year to, to develop it on the track. Uh, anyway, one of the most important thing of the bike is that we, we make along also the, the electronic device on the, on the, on the bike, so like the logic unit and everything. We can see here one of our product. Uh, so the electronic is one is one of the most important parts of, of this kind of bike. Aprilia has a lot of experience in racing and um, I'm sure that you didn't come here just to make up the numbers. Have you taken a lot of um, MotoGP experience and put it into this bike? For sure we have. Our experience is uh, in MotoGP so we, we, we work on this bike like, like a MotoGP. But anyway, this is a... a it's not a, a prototype, it's a, a bike uh, that comes from a, a, a street bike. Well, thank you very much for telling us a little bit about it, and we uh, wish you all the best. Thank you very much. And now a quick look at the track for the opening round of the calendar. A couple of hours drive south from Melbourne. Phillip Island Circuit is one of the most spectacular on the racing calendar. It offers a superb mix of fast and slow corners, which blend together to produce one of the highest average speeds of the entire calendar. It measures 4.445 kilometers 
and has 12 turns with 7 left and 5 right handers. Turn 12 is the one that makes all the difference. Long fast left hander allowing riders to lay the bike in while still hard on the throttle and head to the line at over 300 kilometers per hour for a slipstream finish. years of a one-lap dash, there was an exciting new Super Bowl format in force this year. The top 20 qualified riders would go head-to-head -head in a knockout formula, the bottom four being eliminated after the first session of 12 minutes. Eight of the remaining 16 after another 12-minute session, and then the final eight battling it out for the front two rows in the last 12 minutes. The front row suddenly had an unusual look about it as Jakob Smertz posted fourth quickest time to line up on the outside on the private Guandolini Ducati. Third place went to young British sensation Jonathan Ray on the hands-free 10K Honda. Second grid slot saw a brilliant result for Max Biaggi, who powered his Aprilia RSV4 machine up to the front. While the new format Super Bowl award went to Texan Ben Spies, who showed he's going to be a major force this year on the new Big Bang engined Yamaha R1 bike while Noriyuki Haga was only down in 13th place on his new Ducati. So with the excitement reaching fever pitch, we join our commentary team, Jonathan Green and Steve Martin, for the start of race one. Sixth position already. What a great start from the 13th on the grid from Harga. Brilliant start though from Johnny Ray, as I said. Oh, and that's who's going wide. That is Jackie Bird, is it? That is uh, Yamaha. Yamaha. That is. Uh, no way. Tell me it's not Ben Speed, then it is Ben Speed. Welcome to World Superbikes, my friend. They dumped you up in the first quarter. Southern Lewis. Well, it's all gone. Hey, what a race. Hey, what a race. Got some catching up to do. Already Johnny Ray, as he heads into Honda, he is going sideways and more crashes. And down goes Kianari, he came together. This was what I was expecting to see. There's a lot of testosterone out there. And these guys are really battling to get up in the front. They just don't want to take any... He's finished, he's holding his wrist. Oh, bad, bad news as they head out of Siberia for the first time now. What a start, what a dramatic start. The pole man is gone and Johnny Ray leads from fellow Englishman, or fellow Brit, Leon Hassan. Up there also the coach. His bike moving around a lot more still. You can see it there. There goes Harga. Very soon. Now, that was pure tactics there because we've said that Suzuki is quick, but Harga was on it then. He needed to, though. He needed to. He was like a drop down last lap around 33 out. Max Lorikirsch is tired. He's basically dead. So, what he's got to do now is pull away. Harga's going to really put the hammer down. Will Max be able to strike back? He needs to strike back straight away. Corsa still online for BMW. Big finish in eighth position. Ray is seventh. Lacani has it for Brizio in fourth at the moment. Then it's Kangiyama in third. And you're watching the battle between Harga and Neukirchner. Harga has just taken the lead with five to go. Hats down towards the main straight again with one to go. Here comes the Suzuki though. On Max Neukirchner comes the first turn. Towards the first turn. Can the run make it? And he does. He hits the front and Harga now has to do it. Where does Harga go? He's going to go wherever he can. He has to get in front. He has to have a gap. I'm surprised that Max went so early. But uh, what, he need, what Harga needs to do, because it's difficult on that competitive pass. He hasn't passed Max Morkosh now anywhere this year except going into two months. So he's going to have to find a new opportunity. And uh, he's coming up the way right now. It's a hundred points. He's looking up the outside. And he's not going to there. But he might be getting a good gap. But you can't tie it out of here. And then you lift up the inside. It's just like really see in the background, he hasn't got the drive to do it there, Max is riding absolutely on the limit. Yeah, he's right. waiting for a mistake and he hasn't going to get one. He's not going to have the power, Max should cut the power off a bit and then get on hard up the hill. He's not going to do it here. This is hard, it's fun, it's overtaking maneuver and he tries it, we expected it, he can't quite pull it off. Out of here and into the next corner, you can see him top there, he's basically not his last chance to hit there. Oh, that's it! 
still the last one. Max can still win this. <laughs> he can still win it. He's right there. All the rest of the round is going to slip He's okay. He's okay. That's close enough. If he can get right on the back wheel now, he'll pass him before the line if he gets a good drive. What a race! The first race of 2009! First of all, uh, I want to say uh, qualifier was not so good. Uh, still, I don't like this system, but uh, I have to run this system. And uh, start was uh, fantastic, you know. And uh, I was the five six position uh, first lap. And uh, uh, middle of race, uh, we start. Uh, I start fighting with uh, Max, and uh, we are, we are, we are good, you know, big fighting and. Uh, <coughs> I, I try to attack last five laps because, you know, uh, condition was quite, you know, uh, nervous. And uh, if it start raining, uh, quite difficult to win. So I start to attack from first lap. And uh, last lap, uh, I I know Max uh, passed me because he had the fast bike. And, uh, you know, and uh, I try until last lap uh, to last corner. Because I have uh, some point passing him, but uh, two up ahead he had the mistake and uh, I, I I was passing him. So I'm great, fantastic day and uh, of course this too I tried to do my best and uh, uh, thank you for Ducati and uh, thank you for all the fun and uh, I'm very happy for just move to Ducati in the first race, first win. So. the grid to take the 34th win of his career. Never write off the Japanese rider, even more so this year now he's on a Ducati. And a good result for the All-Star team as Max Neukirk ahead of his teammate Yukio Kagiyama in second and third place. The front row runners had a disappointing showing with Species Race really only lasting just a couple of corners while Biaggi finished down in 11th. And fastest lap for Troy Corsa on the BMW, another surprise there. on the second race so once again it's over to Jonathan Green and Steve Martin in the commentary box
Breeze leads it and is headed for a famous victory. Perhaps, perhaps it's broken back into the Texas still only half a second after the regroup from this and Spees is riding absolutely on the limit. If it makes a small mistake, we saw Neukirchen make a mistake in race one, anything can happen. Watch has him here, he goes round the outside towards the Haitian. position for Haslam, he's going to have another go, and this is his last chance to do it. Now, if you tried it twice, you didn't make it stick, you tried it three times on the last lap, why not? <laughs> there we go then, final lap here, Philip Martin race two, across the line comes Ben Spees, but this is the battle, and Haslam this time goes on the inside and do it, and makes it stick. Rizzo has good corner speed, he's back up on the inside, he's breaking a little bit later, and he's It's getting chilly, but it's hotting up here. Siberia, the coldest place in the world, but Philip Iron in the hottest. Look at Lukomi. I wouldn't be surprised to see if Lukomi get on the podium. <laughs> Go on, Regis. He's back. And Ben Spees is still leading. We haven't forgotten him, and he's broken the back of this race. No mistakes, and he's got it. He's gone from the back of that group. Yes, he has. So now it's a all-out fight between these three for the podium. And at the moment, Haslam is in the ascendance. He comes down the hill towards MG. Lacone can, oh, this is the man in the box seat, but Lacone could get on the podium if he get, does the slipstream effect right. Ben Spees from the Lone Star State of Texas is the new star of World Superbikes, number 19, Yamaha Ben Spees takes victory. We were we were strong in the first half, but really slow in the in the back two corners and couldn't stay with them. But uh, we uh, when the tires went off, we just you know went to the front with uh, with five to go or four to go and just put my head down and, and tried to charge and uh, dig us you know out of a hole that we put us in in the first race. So Pirelli tires were good and and the Yamaha first uh, first weekend for the Big Bang uh, Motor and new R1 was great and and uh, yeah just happy it was a hard race but uh, very fun. Amazing result. Ben Spees had not even seen the Phillip Island circuit before last week, but he took a win in his first appearance there on a brand new bike as well and on Pirelli tyres he had never used before. Noriyuki Haga took a second place to go with his race one win, while Leon Haslam scored a great podium for the Swedish Stiggy Racing Honda team in its first ever superbike race. Regis Lacony also managed to get past Michel Fabrizio in the final stages to finish four. While Max Biaggi was unlikely to finish 15th after a great run at the top for much of the race. So the first championship standings of the new season shows Haga up front with 45 points. Max Neugierke is second on 30 points, has on third on 26. With Spies in fourth place on 25. Four boys also had their championship opener at Phillip Island. And the big question was, was anyone going to take the battle to the all-conquering Hansbury 10k Honda team? It was going to be tough as they had 2008 champion Andrew Pitt and 2007 champion Kenan Sofoglu in their lineup. While the opposition was made up of Anthony West on a sticky racing Honda, Cal Crutchlow and Fabian Foray on the Yamahas, Juan Lascourts on the Kawasaki, a new triumph attack with Gary McCoy, and Barry Veneman on a Suzuki. Let's head to the commentary box to join our regular team of Jonathan Green and Steve Martin for the highlights. 
Absolutely unbelievable top end speed. And a lot of guys have been talking about it. Big improvement in that way. Massive improvement in the hands of Wales across of Spain. Very impressive. 60 kilometers now this corner. It's a... Uh, oh! That one of these... Not to be sad. Yeah, the old player. Good old shame. That's how we haven't heard that risk. But that was a big off. Big head look over his shoulder a minute ago. And he sized it all up. You could see it was just the three of them. He was the third out of those two. And now he's moved up to second. Because uh, Cal Crutchlow is not that far off the map. Now they're coming on, they crush that on latitude. They've got a new resurgence, so to speak. 1.4 seconds, but it's closer than that. Uh, in fact, it's a lot closer than that now. Here we go. In the last corner, Anthony West of Australia leads the way. Exactly where Pitt needs to be now because it's a fog who's coming to. Yeah, yeah. He gets up the inside. So then on the final lap, the two ten Carter Hondas on their way, but West will throw the dice one more time. He's gonna try and split them in the summer loop. But what this comes down to now is it's just basically every man for themselves. So it pretty much is. Here we go. Out of the loop, down towards Honda. Neck and neck, so fog lose. Here before it into the break into the corner. Pitt goes up inside, doesn't make it. Westy looks for an outside line, cuts to the inside. Where's West Pitt's go? Gonna, Where's he gonna try? He's gonna try and get up the inside here in the side here. He can't do it. He's gonna try and get a good drive out of here. Andrew had good mid-corner speed there. Keenan Sophocle is just gonna keep it pinned. Not gonna happen here. Through the right. Pitt's gonna try and slip up the inside of him here. Not gonna happen. Kane has sold the Safoglu, the young turn, came, came back to Supersport at the end of last season and now is going to make a campaign of it, but it's going to be tough all the way because he's got Andrew Pitt right there with him. The guys in the best position right now are Pitt and West because they can get a really good drive into the last corner and hopefully just nip by at the last second. Pitt's going to do it, he's winding himself up, he's looking around the outside and West is going with him, the two Aussies are all over the turn. What a final lap. Kenan Safoglu comes back full time to World Super Sport and immediately takes the race to win. It's going to be a great battle between the Turkish rider and Andrew Pitt this year. And West was also up there for the Sticky Honda team, while from what we've seen at Phillip Island, the others have still got some homework to do. So a new post Bayless era begins in World Superbike as new riders and teams step in to fill the void. Ben Speed was the talk of the town as the American took the first win for a Stars and Stripes rider since Colin Edwards back in 2002. It promises to be an exciting season ahead. Join us all for more Superbike action in a couple of weeks' time. This has been Julian Thomas reporting from Phillip Island. Bye for now and see you soon. Um, I'm really happy. Because we was very afraid about uh, what's happening with the tire. Because maybe we could have a problem. Because long run, every time we get a problem. Beginning of the race, I just want to see what they are doing. And I didn't want to push because I want to do it in the end. Finally, it's working. I wait a little bit in the end. Still had a lot of spinning, but I'm very happy we finished the race. Happy podium, happy winning. <laughs> Post Bayless era begins in World Superbike as new riders and teams step in to fill the void. Ben Spees was the talk of the town as the American took the first win for a Stars and Stripes rider since Colin Edwards back in 2002. It promises to be an exciting season ahead. Join us all for more Superbike action in a couple of weeks' time. This has been Julian Thomas reporting from Phillip Island. 
Bye for now and see you soon.